Hello and welcome to the very first course in the Operations Research One. In the first week, I'm going to talk about three things. First is what is a linear programming. Second is how to formulate a problem into a linear programming. And then the third one is how to solve that problem. So this presentation corresponds to chapter three on your textbook. So it's Wayne Winston's Operation Research Application and Algorithms. So let's start. Linear programming is simply a tool for solving optimization problems. So it means that in the real world, you have a problem that you would like to optimize. It means here that you want to maximize or minimize something. For example, you want to maximize the profit that you gain. You want to minimize the cost of your production system. So those are the problems that um, can be called as an optimization problem. Now, your first task is to convert that real world problem into a linear programming problem. The specific term here is called you are formulating a linear programming problem. So if you hear the word formulation in the context of operations research, it simply means that you translate or you change the problem from the real world descriptions into the mathematical language in the linear programming. Now, why we're going to do that? Because once you have a linear programming problem, there are efficient algorithms that can be used to solve that problem. For example, one of the algorithm is called simplex algorithm. We're going to talk about this algorithm later. This week, we're going to solve the linear programming problem using a much simpler method. It's called a graphical method. So we can see visually how to solve this problem. So from the previous page, you see that our first task is to translate or formulate a real world problem into a linear program problem. So using the next example, we are going to see what is a linear programming problem. So in this example, we're going to talk about Gia Petos wood carving, which manufactures two types of wooden toys called soldiers and train. This is a real world optimization problem because you can see that in the end, it says that Giapeto wants to maximize the weekly profit. So our task here is to formulate this real world optimization problem into a linear programming problem. Okay. To do that, you need to read all the information carefully in this problem. So let me show you that some of the parts you need to highlight or uh, keep that on your mind. The first part is that uh, you need to notice that there are two types of products here, soldiers and trains. And then there's a sentence talking about soldiers. It sells for $27. It uses $10 of raw materials and so on. Okay, so that is about soldier. And then you can see another sentence talking about train. Okay, you keep going and then you get to the part where it talks about the avail availability of the resources. So uh, Giapetto can have all the raw materials it needs, but it only can obtain 100 hours for finishing and 80 hours for carpentry. So it talks about the limitation of the resources. And you keep going. Finally, you see that the objective of Giapetto or the objective of this problem is to maximize the weekly profit. Please take your time pausing this video and carefully read this problem. Capture all the important uh, information from this problem. So I strongly suggest you to pause this video and really read the problem. Okay, so you know that you need to formulate a linear programming problem from a real world optimization problem. But then what are the characteristics that must exist in a linear programming problems? Well, there are four characteristics that you must provide in your linear programming problem. The first is called decision variable. The second is called objective function. The third is called constraints. And then the fourth is sign restrictions. 
you must have all these four characteristics such that your formulation can be called as a complete linear programming problem. Okay, so you must not miss any of these characteristics. Now let's think about what decisions that Giapetto must make every week. If you read the problem again, you see that Giapetto must decide how many soldiers and how many trains to produce each week. Because this decision is, um, at this point, we don't know for sure yet whether we should make zero soldier, one, two, three, four, five, ten, thirteen, twenty-seven, or whatever. So we put the symbol x1 to say that x1 is the variable that represents the number of soldiers produced each week. The same thing for the decision for trains. At this point, we don't know yet whether we should make 0, 5, 7, 23, 17, or whatever number of trains. So we put the variable x2. Okay, so these are the decisions that every single week Giapetto must make. If at your first intuition you think that profit is the decision, no, it is not. Profit is the consequence of your decisions, right? Because you produce this many number of soldiers and this many number of trains, you get the profit. You do not decide the profit. You decide how many you produce soldiers, trains, such that you get the profit. And that is our objective function. So the objective function is a function of the decision variables. So as I said before, the profit is the consequence or the functions of these two variables. Depends on how many soldiers you produce, how many trains you produce, you will get the profit. Okay, so this is very important. And then in Giapetto, you see that the objective is to maximize the profit. So the problem here is uh, maximization. The objective is to maximize the profit. Now let's compute the profit. For one soldier that Giapetto produces, it can sell it for $27. However, it also uses raw materials, $10, and uses some variable costs of $14. So the profit for one single soldier is 27 minus 10 minus 14, which is $3. Okay, same thing for train. You can calculate the profit is $21, the selling price, minus $9, the raw material, minus $10, the overhead cost. So this is how your objective function looks like. You obtain $3 for each soldier you produce. And then you obtain $2 profit for each train you produce. 3 times x1 plus 2 times x2. So let me repeat. 3 is the profit of one soldier times x1 is the number of soldiers you produce each week. 2 is the profit of each train. x2 is the number of trains you produce every week. So if you do the calculation 3 times x1 plus 2 times x2, you get the total profit for Giapetto in that week. Good. So, so far we've known that Giapetto must decide how many trains and how many soldiers it should produce each week. We have also formulated the objective function, which is to maximize the profit. 3 times x1 plus 2 times x2. Now let's talk about the constraints. If you want to maximize the profit, you can say that you can produce infinite number of soldiers, right? Like a million, two millions, three millions, 10,000 millions, 700 billions, or whatever, right? You just produce as many as you want, so you get 
more, much, 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 much more profit. But that is not the case because in Giapeto you have some limitations of the resources that you can use. So those are the constraints. Those are the restrictions that limit the values of decision variables. So the first constraint is that we only have 100 hours of finishing time. Now you see that for each soldier we produce, we need two hours of finishing. And then for each train, we need one hour of finishing hours. So we formulate it mathematically, two times x1. Remember x1 is the number of soldiers that we produce. Plus one times x2. So x2 is the number of trains must be less than or equal to 100 because we only have 100 finishing hours, right? Let's do the same thing for the carpentry hours. We can only have 80 hours of carpentry time. From the problem, you can see that each soldier takes one hour of carpentry time and each train takes one hour as well. So 1 times x1 plus 1 times x2 must be less than 80 hours. Now finally, there is a constraint that says that at most 40 soldiers should be produced, which means that you should not produce more than 40 soldiers. So you can say simply x1, the number of soldiers you produce each week, must be less than or equal to 40. So these are the three constraints in the Giapetto problem. Last but not least, you should never forget to put the sign restrictions which means what are the allowable values for each decision variables. In a Giapetto problem, it is obvious that you cannot produce a minus or negative number of soldiers and trains, right? You must produce at least zero trains and zero soldiers every week, and then you can produce one, two, three, four, and then so on. So the sign restriction says that X1 and X2 must be greater than or equal to zero. Finally, let's put them all together to show the complete linear programming problem formulation for the Giapetto problem. You see that we have number one, the decision variables, number two, the objective function, number three, all the constraints, and then number four, the sign restrictions for both x1 and x2 variables. Now you should be able to answer these two questions. I've got more questions for you in the next video and I strongly suggest you to try answering all these questions to check your understanding before going on to the next topic.